Hi, welcome to this quick Godot tutorial. I thought I would show you how to make a typing text effect um, in a couple of different ways. So let's get started. This is the basic scene. This is the text. Uh, I chose a sort of uh, nightmare sort of uh, horror theme text because I tend to find that this effect is most used in sort of found footage kind of video games. You get it in RPGs as well, um, but yeah. So the thing that bothers me with this effect a lot of the time is if you just append text to get the effect, so you start with N and then I, or N and then NI, NIG, etc, 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 you end up with this kind of effect where the text will type and it will look sort of okay, but... The problem is, as you add more text, the auto wrap function of the label will sort of move text from one line to the next. Um, which, you know, that is a perfectly logical thing to have happen. It's sort of what would happen if you were to type in a word processor. But um, it doesn't look that polished in a video game. And when people are trying to read along say on a let's play or on a stream um, it can be a bit jarring uh, to have the word that you're reading suddenly jump from the first line to the second line so i'll show you the example so this is just the standard append text and what this is doing is it's adding a character each time the timer times out um, actually just before i run this let me just show you the scene so we have the example text which sets the text um, when you click start, you have, then have the several node um, mode buttons, which are sort of more of a quick setup thing for me rather than relevant to what you will be doing. And then we have the typing label with a timer attached, and that is the label down at the bottom here that will fill with the text that we have. So we click start with the append text mode done. And what you should see is the word opposite in veil, or the words opposite in veil, will jump to the next line as they fill out. And it kind of just is a bit unpleasant looking. So, start. So, as you might have noticed, opposite, it got to about the second O in opposite, and it suddenly jumped to the next line. Um, and again, as I said, that is sort of how it would work in a real typing application, but in the realm of a video game where you are sort of trying to tell a narrative story, it is not the best. So, I was trying to come up with a custom solution, and I just couldn't get it to work any better than a pen text. I will show you the custom solution at the end, but... As I was sort of looking through the source code to see if there was a bug or whatever was causing the problem with my solution, I remembered that there's a thing called percent visible. And if we look at percent visible in the label thing, the tooltip says useful to animate the text in a dialog box. So you'll notice it by default it's set to one. Um, that is that it's sort of saying zero is zero percent one is 100%, um, and that way you can essentially multiply the amount of text in there by one to get the full amount visible. Um, so let's have a look at the percent visible function. Um, if we start now, you should notice something about this. So it was more obvious um, with Veil, um, but you may have noticed that both Opposite and Veil didn't jump lines. And this is because some magic in the Godot label auto wrap function takes into account the percentage visible and actually pre-lays out the text in a nice format. So you don't get this odd jumping effect. Um, so I'll just show you how to do this quickly. Um, this is the original one that you just saw. 
where where it jumped around. You have the text, um, and each time the timer times out, it increments the current position of the substring, and then just sets the text to the substring of full text uh, when the length when the character position reaches the full text length then the timer stops and the ui unlocks again sort of irrelevant to how you would set it up but i feel like it's useful to show how that works so yes it, it's a very simple thing to set up it's it's what uh essentially two four lines of code really uh seven if you include this function which is i would say somewhat optional um so yeah really quick simple but it does have that weird jumping effect so and the thing is if you are looking for that effect with that jumping it's a perfect thing to do perfect thing to use but if we look at the second example which is the percent it's even simpler you have one uh, variable PC in this case, um, and what that does is it determines the percentage amount that gets increased with each tick of the timer. So by setting it to one over the text length, you are essentially getting one character per tick. If you wanted more characters, you could change this. You could say two divided or, you know, um, this yield just make sure that this text has updated before trying to call this. Um, I'm not 100% sure it's necessary, but it, I feel like it works a lot more accurately and frequently if you have this in here first, because uh, controls usually update on the next idle frame, not immediately. Um, you reset the percentage visible to zero um, when you start the animation, otherwise nothing will happen when you go to add it and then each frame we increment percent visible so this value uh, by pc which uh, so um, if we look at this example there's i think 150 characters so it will take 150 timeouts of the timer before you have the full text and that is determined by this pc when it reaches one or higher, um, just in case the multiplier isn't exactly around multiple of 100%, uh, we stop the timer and emit the signal, which again is more just for this, so that it unlocks all the buttons and everything. Um, so yeah, that was the basics of it. It's, it's very simple. Um, again, you have the append version, which has the thing where it jumps around a bit um and then you have the percentage version so my thinking was with my custom solution um it's 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 a lot more involved <laughs> and it doesn't work much if any better than the append version unfortunately but my idea was you find every word in the text you then make an array of words and you essentially, every time the timer updates, it updates the offset position. It then tries to fill the entire word by using a substring of the word up to that position. So you see, we have output equals word substring zero to position. So position one, you would get one character. Position two, you would get two characters, etc., etc. Uh, you then have the position minus the word length, and then it tries to fill in a character, for example, a space, for each character in the word that isn't on display. And I was hoping that that would allow for the text to um, essentially be auto-formatted so that it wouldn't jump. It doesn't work that well. It works with certain characters and certain combinations, 
um, certain font sizes, etc. But it doesn't work much better than the append. But I've left it in this tutorial because um, it actually gives a really cool sort of hackery effect, I think. Um, and it seemed, I just felt like it would be a good sort of thing to show. So we're going to use the custom solution now. We put the fill character to uh, period. And when I press start, what you should notice is it will say n dot 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 dot. And then ni dot dot dot. Nig dot dot and so on until the word is finished and then it will go on to the next and the way it goes on to the next um, basically at the end of each word you have this stored text and the stored text gets appended with the last word that was fully completed and then each time the timer updates you are essentially appending the filled word to the stored text and this way you don't get sort of duplicate uh, duplicated entries of words and sort of uh, extra dots and stuff. Yeah, it just works better. Obviously, a lot more mo memory overhead. Uh, but yeah, so this is how this works. Night. The darkness keeps me from sleep. I was supposed to have the opposite effect, but I can't stop thinking about what lurks beyond the black veil. And as you can see, again, it kind of jumped. Veil jumped to the next line. I think opposite might have as well. Darkness keeps me from sleep. It's supposed to have the opposite. Yeah, it also jumps. Um, so yeah, it, it's not really any better than a pen text, but it does have this kind of cool um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it has this kind of cool hackery effect. You can you know change it to stars maybe. I don't know. It's just you know meh. <laughs> Hopefully that was interesting. Um, hopefully you now know how to do it properly, which would be to do this. Um, so essentially you are setting the percentage visible every tick of a timer timeout. You could do this other ways. You could increment it using an animation player. You could do it on Delta um, yeah, during process, but I find timer just works a little bit better. It's quicker and easier to tweak. So by default, you have a 0 0.05 second timeout, which feels like a good typing speed. If you want it to happen faster, you can decrease that to say 0 0.01. If you want it to go a little bit slower, like an incompetent typer or just something that's a little bit easier to read for people, you can set it to 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds. Um, anything slower than that, and it's kind of painful to read, but, you know. Um, so yes, I hope that was useful. And if it was, feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, I do fairly regular-ish <laughs> uh, game development Twitch streams at twitch.tv slash games. Uh, I hope to see you there. We usually do random things. I'm happy to discuss uh, programming problems, general programming or Godos related. Um, I also do tabletop game development. So if you want to learn how to make board games or card games, I occasionally do content on that as well. I am currently playtesting a card game that I'm hoping to release sometime early next year. So if you would like to come and help me playtest that, you are more than welcome. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.